What's up, my peeps? How's it going? So I'm actually down in Pennsylvania, so this week's episode of the Monday Challenge is actually on the go. Today we're doing a clone effect, but we're gonna do it a little bit differently. We're gonna do a 360 rotating clone effect. Let's get it going. Alright, so I'm gonna shoot this on the Insta360 ONE X. Originally I wanted to try and do it on the Xeon Crane 2 and use that time-lapse feature. However, I couldn't figure out how to just get it to rotate around a few times, so I'm just gonna go with this and then do the rotation in post. So I'll just shoot myself in various areas of the studio and then piece it together later on. If you watched my video that I put out a couple weeks ago with the Insta360 messing around with that, I used some of what I learned in that episode in today's episode. So basically what I did was I took all the clips that I wanted, lined them up on the timeline, had them the exact same length, had them stream over the course of the whole song, and then I keyframed the animation. So I'll just give you guys an example of that. So let's just put this one down on the timeline, this one down on the timeline, and this one down on the timeline. And then we're all just gonna line them up Good to go, same same time length, same everything. So then you'd come over to GoPro VR, your effects, GoPro reframe. For me, I changed the yaw so that it would rotate. Put a keyframe down at the very beginning, went all the way to the end, set a keyframe for 3x. That made it rotate three times. Then I clicked on GoPro reframe, Command C to copy or Control C if you're on PC, I think. And then all I did was I just went to every single one of these video clips and pasted that down. So let's just go to a random spot in the timeline. If I mute this, it's they're in the exact same spot. And it does that throughout the entire sequence. So that's how you're able to actually get the animation to be the same for every single clip throughout that same time frame. And then as far as masking it out, let's just do an example here. So. We'll put this one on, on top of it. So we're gonna mask this out. So we see that he pops in right there. So I would just cut right here because I don't need all this information before that. So we're gonna cut everything before we actually need it on the timeline. We're gonna grab the pen tool on our opacity. I like to back this up to like 25% and then just set some points. Start at the very edge, crank that feather. And then this is where you wanna keyframe your path. So you hit the keyframe on the path, and then I also like to add just a little bit of a fade in, just because it makes it a little bit smoother, maybe the lighting changed the light coming from the windows, I don't know. Then we move all the way over, we go to right there. That's where it should be 100% in. So then you grab your path, click on your path, select these two endpoints, and you just drag them across the screen. And then you just play it through, boom. That's, that's pretty much it. This was a really fun challenge for me. Originally, I wanted to try it with the A6300 on the Zhiyun and have it mapped out with a path, but I couldn't figure that out. So then I was like, well, hey, I have this 360 camera. Why not try and use this? And I really like the way this effect came out and I would love to try and use this eventually down the road for some client work. But yeah, that's gonna conclude today's episode. If you guys like this video, hit the like button. You have any questions, comments, leave them down in the comment section below. Subscribe, ring the bell, all the things. And as always, stay hungry. I really like to use doors to pop in and out of. It's just like a fun thing to do. Yeah, I'm not gonna.